All right, so I cheated, and as uh, Caitlin was talking, I started some uh, some different comments, and there's some pretty good ones. Dave Jensen says, lately I've been logging in in fear that someone had bad happen to uphold. Uh, seems like a cancer, these hackers. Why is no one in jail yet? And this is the thing I've been talking about. You got to make your voice heard. I know some people gave me a lot of guff for talking about uh, reporting these, these scams and these rug pulls to the New York Attorney General. But look, um, evil flourishes when good men do nothing. So we can just let this crap happen or keep happening, or we can uh, speak up and uh, say, hey, look, this is what's going on and this is happening. And uh, hopefully it doesn't happen again. So, uh, yeah, just be careful out there and try not to use as many hot, any hot wallets you possibly can. Use a cold storage wallet. Links in the description. <laughs> Carrie says bots thwarted. I guess there's bots attacking the, uh, or the bunch of bots in the chats. So thanks to all my wrenches and admins. Uh, there's a reason why I gave out like 50 wrenches so people could deal with it. You guys are doing great. Thank you. Kaylin says, I'm here. All right. Uh, Mentelect. Mentelect. Uh, home prices are going down, but BlackRock has been buying up homes below 500K. This is the thing that's that's uh, really concerning to me. We just did that video, or that the video, we just did a, that article about BlackRock, how they waited for the right time to get into crypto, which is when everything was going, you know, uh, down. I mean, we're at like a 75% correction from the Bitcoin all-time high. It was a beautiful play. Great. Good for them. The thing that concerns me, though, is that BlackRock and other institutions are really buying up uh, housing throughout the entire United States and probably globally, if you wanna take a look at it. The question then becomes, if they have so much in their balance sheet and they can't get rid of it, my question was twofold. The question is, if they can't get rid of it and it's on their balance sheet and it's liabilities and it drags down the company because there's that separate division, will those things get you know sold off? Will there be another bailout? Or if they're buying these houses to, to resell that's one thing. But the second thing, and the more nefarious one, is if they're buying all these houses to rent out, well, now you got a bigger problem because they can set any kind of rents that they really want to, especially if they are the majority holders. Because imagine this. Here's a great point, actually. Where was it? From Robin. Damn, I've just been looking for a rental here in Santa Cruz, California, paying $2,000 for a tiny converted garage with no yard, and that's super cheap. No relief in sight. Even lots go for a million. So the question then is, if you have these big institutions and even BlackRock with 10 trillion assets under management, <laughs> and they're setting all the rates for the rent, how far out do, you, do people get priced out? And can they actually be a part of the whole system or just go, you know what, I came rent because I'm priced out of this whole situation. It's, uh, it's a scary thought, and it's one that uh, can become a reality real quick. So this, we'll see. Let's see. Architect Jeff says real estate may be affected on macro. It also depends on the micro economy. That's true. It's all local. Um, but there are some places that we talked about, Miami, Austin, and then Caitlin can really tell you the ones that, uh, how everything's doing in, in uh, Phoenix. Uh, this is a good question for Caitlin. Uh, Caitlin, you're f uh, have builders stopped new construction? That's a good question. I know here they haven't, in El Paso, they haven't stopped the construction totally, but they've gone away from the McMansions and they're going for smaller houses, which I think is a good idea, especially if the average house cost is 405000 If they say, well, we're going to build a four hundred dollars house, they're just going to lose their ass because what's going to happen is people aren't going to be able to pay for that and they have to hold on inventory. But if they build a house for two hundred fifty k, well, they can sell those pretty quick. Just saying. Ah, let's see. What else? This is a good point. Yugun, uh, that's why I'm letting mine go. See you in two years. This is something I talked to Paul Barone uh, from the Paul Barone Network. He lives in Miami, been there for years and years. And he was telling me that a lot of the uh, upper echelon of people uh, with multi-million dollar houses were selling their houses back in November, December, January. And they were moving out and uh, getting just uh, smaller rentals because they knew what was going to happen. They sold at the peak. They get a nice new rental for a while. They wait for things to come back 25, 35% reduction, and they buy right back in and a nice little profit over two years. It's not a bad idea, actually. So that's what we got. Let's see. So that was the starred ones. Let's see what we got here. Ah, this is interesting. Joby, 
Rental has gone up a ton in my area. I live in Pennsylvania and West Virginia, about 50, 50 between the two, and both have gone up uh, dramatically. Again, that's not good. That's really not good. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, this, this is what I was trying to remember, not this one. I'll, well, Jarrett, a lot of Celsius creditors came out the other day. My name was on it, even though I've yet to file a claim. Yeah, I know. Celsius, worthless. Uh, where'd it go? There, ah, this one right here. Gary, Gary Reed backing tracks. Uh, how do you feel about the 18 and a half year real estate cycle on target for a 2025, 2026 I'm a big believer in cycles. Take a look at fourth turning. Take a look at the four year cycles. Actually, you don't even have to imagine it. I'll throw it up right here. The four year cycles for crypto goes like this. I think everything goes in cycles. And just like what Caitlin was talking about, there's the normal cycle that's going on right now. So just like in crypto, we had a halving in 2012 for Bitcoin. Then in 2013, an all-time high of 1000 bucks for Bitcoin, $1,000. Then a dip and a reset. Same thing happened in 2016, 2019. And the same thing just happened in 2020, 2021. We hit the all-time high and we're going into a dip and a reset. This is what I'm waiting for. This part right here, which I think we got to wait a little bit to go. But don't worry, because then we have a having all-time high dip reset. So the question then is what Gary talks about. 18 and a half year real estate cycle on target for a 2025 crash. I don't know. That will be something to see how it all plays out. Hopefully we see a downfall or a downtrodden for 12 to 18 months, then bounce back. Kayla and I believe talked about for like a year or so, and then it bounces back. So we'll see. I'm hoping for that, but I don't know. I don't know, especially for cycles. Not meme. The Socratic method gives me a crease. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Rob. You were right. America is not the center of the universe. That would be Great Britain. Remember to us, you were just an ex-colony. Yeah, you know what? I sent a, I sent a, a message to Guy on uh, the 4th of July. It was a Monday. And I said, hey, have fun working. We're just taking a day off. A little dig. Yeah, let's see. Ah, okay. Kaylin says, I see a correction, but not a crash. Definitely cyclical, especially coming out of the unsustainable market the last two years. And she's right. I mean, we see, that's, that's why in our market, we see these cycles condensed and so fast. Four-year cycles is a very long time if you really think about it. Um, if you take a look at the, the economic output for America, the last time we had a pretty big downfall, downtrodden i mean going away from covid which was just a black swan event 2008 and 9 since then we have we had a robust uh economic output for 12 years or so and now here we are so these four year cycles i think this because we're so volatile everything just 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 uh, so condensed but we we make it unsustainable every 4 years because it heats up so fast and that's why like you see like bitcoin goes from 1000 to 20,000, then to 60,000. And then of course, next cycle, who knows what it will be. So I can see how uh, maybe it's just a uh, real estate was unsustainable for a bit. Now it's just a pullback. All right. Ah, this is a great question. Do you see the up and coming water shortages playing a bigger role in the real estate markets? Pretty soon they won't be able to supply enough water to places like Arizona and California, not to mention Las Vegas and Lake Mead, those types of areas. And you know, like I know a lot of people give a lot of guff to Michael Burry from the big short, but one of his big, one of his big uh, plays is, uh, is, is water. And he believes that there's going to be a, a massive water shortage, but he's been saying this for like seven years and I can see it actually happening. But again, it's not all doom and gloom. Look around. There's some, there are some good parts. Let's see. <laughs> but babe. I am house poor because I live in my car. Probably saving a lot of money. I'll tell you that. Uh, Jay Young Chow, do you ever look at credit card car debt for the retailer? I feel like people are not looking in depth on it and sleeping on it. You think people are over leveraged and might see avalanche of delinquencies? That's a good question for Caitlin. Me personally, 
like when we bought this house in 2003, four, five, somewhere around there, 2003, I think it was 2005. Um, our interest rate was 6.86, almost 7%. We thought we were getting a steal. And then when I walked in the bank, like, sir, what do you do? And I told him medical industry, pharmaceuticals and things and medical device sales. Like, oh, okay, well, how much do you make? I told him, like, okay, good enough. You're approved for this. I was like, that's it? He's like, yeah, that's it. You, you can do it. And I was like, wow, that's unsustainable. And sure enough, it was. So I guess the bigger question is really how back, how far back are banks looking at things? I haven't gotten a loan for a while. Uh, another macro question. Love from India. Just want to know what's your opinion on possible China versus Taiwan conflict. I'm curious if your monitoring is may crash entire summer. Look, I think we all know what happened uh, with the Russia-Ukraine war. If we, if it's if it's America versus versus China, I'm not concerned about the market because everything else will crash. That'll be that'll be that'll be World War Three. So uh, we'll see how it goes out. It is amazing that Nancy Pelosi just said, you know what? I know what the president says. I know what my party wants me to do, but I'm still going to do it. We'll see how it plays out. I wonder if what the reasoning behind that was. There's got to be a reason, right? Right? I don't know. Uh, Y'all been in a boom for a decade. Exactly. Bobby Schaus, uh, top three exchanges still standing after on this. Binance, FTX, and probably Coinbase. And OKX. And, you know, if you want to find out some of the top exchanges, let me show you. There's a website. It looks like this. It's called Nomics. And N-O-M-I-C-S dot com. And you can, you can scroll through and filter out by the percentage of volume as far as, like, trades. They do a rating system. Uh, just as far as like if there's any, any kind of audits, any kind of shady behaviors, uh, the things that are going on behind the scenes, the number of trades, percent of trades and pairs. And uh, you can see that, let me, let me, you can just see that the volume, just by volume itself, finance is just, to, this is just today. Just today, 58 billion. Coinbase is 1.7 billion. OKX is 14 billion. Let me just sort this by volume. How about that? I don't know what Bitwell is. Never heard of them. Binance, Bitwell, OKX, FTX, Bybit, Bing X, Huobi Global, and then. But you also have to understand that uh, some of this volume is just back and forth and not really. So if you just take a look at this every day, you'll kind of get a, an understanding of which ones are the big ones and which ones are not. That is interesting. Coinbase, all the way down here. 1.7 billion, that's still a lot. Anyhow, good question. Let's jump back. No, it's a good question. Hey, Rob, any news on why Gensukishi is dumping so hard? I'm uh, not sure if you've already talked about this. It went from 42 cents all in on 30 cents. I wonder what it is right now. So Gensukishi, if you don't know, this was, uh, we, we have a second channel. It's called Dan Degen which if you want to gamble, that's, that's the channel to go to. That's really just for a bunch of gamblers and wild, wild west shooters. And uh, one of those was against a quiche that I covered. Man, it's really gone down, 23 cents. So we talked about this. We got in at around a penny, penny and a half or so. But you can tell over the last <clears throat> 30 days, there's been quite a drop off. I'll have to find out why. Maybe there's an unlock schedule. Maybe it's been, and they're dumping on the market. It could be a, a re reason or a rationale. It's still a good project, but expect extreme volatility moving forward, but good question. I'll let you know when I figure it out myself. Can't tell you what I, I'll tell you what I know what I don't know. I don't know. Uh, ooh, this is good. Sean says, I've lived in Miami for 15 years. Post-COVID rent and housing pricing is scary. Local economy, income doesn't support it. Pushing at the original locals and the local culture. Yeah. San Antonio, eh. it's not as expensive as Austin, we'll say. But if you want the cheapest, come to El Paso. 
that's the most inexpensive place you can go to. Let's see, what did I miss? Shoot, sorry, I missed a bunch of questions. Uh, T and D, John, Steve, Kelshowitz. Oh yeah, Kraken. I use Kraken. I just wish it had. <clears throat> they use an ACH type of platform, so you could uh, uh, connect your uh, your bank account. Unfortunately for me, for some reason, it doesn't work. I have USAA. I don't understand why it doesn't work, but it doesn't. But I like Kraken. I like Jesse Powell. Uh, the CEO, those, they do good things. <laughs> That's a good question. Why do we allow companies to buy houses that should only be set, sold to citizens and individuals? A free market. That's how it goes. Thoughts on Michael Saylor stepping down? I don't think Michael Saylor even, for MicroStrategy, I don't think he was really into it anymore. He's just, he's got a clear path. Same thing with like Jack Mahler's and... <clears throat> And uh, people who just start to dedicate their life to Bitcoin. They, just, they see Bitcoin and that's, that's the only way. And uh, it drives them. Again, it's not so much about how much money you make. It's, it's what drives you in your in your day-to-day -day operations. And if it's not your job or if it's not your business, then it's time to get out. Unfortunately, some people can't get out. Some people are stuck in their jobs. Uh, believe me, I used to be there. It sucks. You don't want to be that guy or that gal. That's why it's important to, you know, Try to dabble into the investments, assets. Don't uh, be cash heavy all the time. Doesn't really, doesn't really work like that in the long term. That's just me though. Now, let's see. Oh yeah. Ron says, do you think the altcoins that are already negative, 95% can still go down if there's a World War III? Absolutely. And if you think that Bitcoin's gonna be above 10K in uh, World War III, might be a fantasy world. Some people will say, but Rob, you don't understand. It's the, it's the hardest asset out there. Trust me. There's enough. In here, we are in a bubble. You have to understand. Go outside and talk to anybody about Bitcoin, and how much they believe in it, and they understand the philosophy. They understand about hard money. They understand about fractionalized lending from banks. They understand about inflation and, how that, and, the, and the detriment that causes. They don't know. And uh, if you think that people are going to put their faith into Bitcoin, we might, we will for the most part, but a lot of people out there are like, nope, cash is king. I will keep cash. They'll even go to gold. They'll go to silver because guess what? And if it really goes down the tubes, that's what it'll be. Now, at some point, they'll figure it all out, but I don't think it's going to be, if, it, if World War III happens tomorrow, no one's, nobody's taking, nobody's selling all their, their assets and putting everything in a Bitcoin and saying it'll be fine. It was, it's still a risk on asset. Oh, what? Jeff comes here with the fire. Rob, did you see Voyager's new presentation stack today? Better offers and FTXs and plans to be done with bankruptcy by Q1 2023. That's great news. And uh, thanks, Jeff, for doing my job. <laughs> That's great. I like to hear these things because the FTX offer was not the greatest. And some of you were saying it's, it's good because... Voyager is, you know, slumping so hard. I didn't think it was that great. I think they could have done better. Looks like they're going to do better. So great. I will do a video on that. <laughs> uh, let's see. China had two aircraft carriers. Yeah, and they also, they also fired missiles. What are you going to do? Uh, war is big. And I'll leave it like that. I'll leave it with this, what Bobby Shout says. War is big business. And uh, it's amazing how, like, when you have an economic downturn, how war suddenly becomes the answer. Just saying. All right. Well, anyway, that's it for today. So, everybody, uh, it's been 50 minutes, almost an hour. I, we need to get out of here to, and uh, get some things, other stuff done. I got to definitely take a look at that presentation for Voyager. But look, Two things. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe. That's great. But you know I'll be here every day. So just stop by. Also, if you want to check on uh, for Kayla McKeague, her uh, real estate um, YouTube channel. It's in a, There's a link in the description. Plus the video that she did with talk, which talking about the macro events that are going on in real estate. Important to watch. Interesting stuff. And condensed and concise. So that's it for today. So look, 
Thanks everybody for stopping by. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one. Adios. Bye.